Here in a corona time, there are limits to how many people can be gathered. In this video, I will show a lineup that can keep an eye on how many customers there are in a store. We need a device that can detect infrared light, a so-called PIR sensor. PIR means passive infrared, which implies that it does not itself emit infrared light, but receives what other sources emit. The sensitive device is covered by a special removable plastic lens. The sensor does not respond to the intensity of the infrared light, but to the changes of the infrared light that occurs due to movements. If we turn the sensor around, we find two small wheels that can be turned. I have turned the wheels as shown here, so that the sensitivity is greatest and it takes the shortest possible time before it is ready for a new impulse. In this photo, you can see how the terminal should be connected to ground and to a positive voltage between 4.5 volts and 20 volts. Here you must use the terminal called VCC. The middle leg is the output. When an impulse arrives, it stays high for just as long as the delay is set. At the corner there is a yellow jumper that should sit as shown here. To learn more about the PIR sensor, watch my YouTube video about it. We need two PIR sensors and two microbits, one set for the entrance and one set for the exit. I have put the sensors into a piece of toilet paper tube so that they do not look too much to the sides. You can possibly bend the terminals of the sensor slightly with pliers and connect them using standard test cables. Another option is to use special cables like these. Here is a diagram showing how to connect the PIR sensors to each of their microbits. Unfortunately, the sensors do not work properly with 3 volts from the microbit. So we connect them to an extra power source between 4.5 and 6 volts. The power sources must have a common ground. The output of the sensor must be connected to P1 on the microbit. So we need two sets that look like this. The microbit at the exit must be provided with this program. Each time a customer leaves the store, the microbit must send a message to the other microbit, which must be located at the entrance. The program for the last microbit looks like this. It counts the arriving customers. And if there is a message from the exit that a customer has left the store, it counts one down. It also shows the number of customers in the store. If there are five or more, a small sound is played. Now we will provide the microbit at the entrance with a Wapster bit. It is a device that can make the microbit connect to the internet. The setup looks like this. On Seluxit's webpage you can see how to get it online.
You can also see how to connect it to the website that can collect our data. It is called Wapsto.com. Inside Make Code, we have to make an extension with blocks for the Wapsto bit. Click Advanced and Extensions. Search for Wapsto and click on the icon. Now there is a new item with Wapsto blocks. Our program now looks like this. And it presupposes that your Wapster bit is online, either by help of Wi-Fi or NB-IoT. Now we need to make some so-called widgets inside Wapster.com. They must receive the data from our lineup. I start by making a so-called dashboard, which is shown here. Then I make widgets that are set up to match the codes in our program. Finally, you can adjust the layout a bit. And then we are ready to let customers buy books.